and welcome to Kapow Toys Presents. I'm your host, King Grimlock, and today we're going to be taking a look at Dark of the Moon Shockwave, the new big bad from the upcoming third Transformers movie. He is resplendent in purple and grey. Um, and he is presented here in his Cybertronian tank mode. How can you tell it's Cybertronian? Because it kind of looks like a robot falling over in a mishmash shape. Um, let's get this out of the way straight away. This rubbery hose here. Um, very reminiscent of his G1 self. The rubber cable going into the back. Uh, the place I have it plugged in in the middle there is actually the um, part of the backpack that he has where you kind of plug it in for the uh, robot mode and uh, again on the mech tech gimmick as well, mech tech the cannon um, is a movable part there but this hose can kind of plug in just about anywhere that there is one of the mech tech ports um, one on the top there, there's a couple on the inside there as well so you can kind of make it, put it where you want and in the same way this blade here can also be plugged in in any of the mech tech points so you know, I don't know, you can have them kind of semi half of them flying thing, kind of. But if you do remove it from there, it does free up one of the 3mm clip ports, and there are a few of those scattered around the figure. Um, there's another one on either side of the leg there. Um, and it's really nice to see the incorporation of a uh, an existing gimmick in with the new figures and in with the new gimmicks as well. It's uh, nice that they're going to carry on the theme from the second movie into the third. Um, overall, the sculpting on this is glorious. I mean, the detailing is absolutely fantastic. All the little details picked out show you some of those panels that are picked out on the top there. None of them are painted in. They are literally just sculpted on top and it is left in the, the, the purple. So it kind of is left to the lights to pick up the uh, areas of sculpting in there. I love these claw areas at the front, this lovely sort of gunmetal silver. Um, and the wheels, the, they do spin along with his little wheels on the underside as well, um, which gives him the, the motion. I love these tracks, the way they're picked out, and there is detail actually picked out. I'm not sure how well it'll pick up on the camera in there, maybe. Um, and there's a little bit of detail picked out there, but not much. But it's sort of like half the track is painted which seems very, very odd that they didn't do the whole track. It seems very, very odd indeed. Um, overall, it's it's kind of hard to judge his his robot, his robot, his alt mode, because it is Cybertronian. I mean, it's kibble-free because, you know, you can't see any part of the robot. But it doesn't matter if you do, because it is Cybertronian, in the same sense that it doesn't have to be a coherent, um, you know, Earth-based tank. It can have these sort of weird and wonderful parts. I mean, the fact that there is all this very, very, uh, I don't know, goth, they're not gothic, um, geiger sculpting all the way through it with these lovely curves, um, sort, of, sort of like the curving metallic form is quite beautifully done and really resplendent within this figure. I'm um, showing you his, his moving mech tech gimmick. That's it, and it does lock into place there. Um, here's a little bit, you could do with a better spring on there, maybe. Hopefully, that'll be sorted out for the general release. Um, overall, he has a very good colour scheme. It's sort of like a purple with a lilac. There is some metallic element to it as well, which is really nice. And in all, he is quite a nice figure. He is quite a nice looking alt mode. In the realism of the movie verse, where some of the cars, especially us, and some of the jets, I mean, Starscream's alt mode's gorgeous. And they are so realistic and so detailed and so, as much as possible, accurate. It's always a bit gar gar jarring to get a uh, to get a Cybertronian mode like this. It's not saying it's a bad mode. It just it, it doesn't suit my personal aesthetics. Anyway, let's have a look at how good he is in that robot mode. I love my enemies. Bring out the best of me. I think of everything. I like society. best of me I think of everything I like society
does the robot mode bring? Well, it's very difficult to say, having not yet seen the film or even finished artwork or designs from the film. Maybe the new trailer that was announced today will uh, will give that up. Um, so it's not sure. It's hard to say whether he's a faithful representation or not. Going off the artwork from the Rising Storm comic, he isn't too bad at all. Um, but the overall aesthetic for me is, is I mean, it's very skeletal in this chest area. It's, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Deacon Bose from the Inhumanoids. Um, that sort of look to him. Um, he doesn't feel very... I mean, this can sound G1-y, but Shockwave, you know, we obviously had that big lens area in the chest um, from the G1 Shockwave. Here you've got this, they say, this skeletal outlook. The head mould is beautiful, there's no denying the head sculpt is utterly stunning. Let's see how well, how close we can get that. And if we can actually get any light piping on it, uh, maybe a little bit. But yeah, the light piping is superb, he glows beautifully, that old, old one eye himself. And uh, some of the sculpting is brilliant. Some of the design and uh, engineering work is utterly stunning. The fact that the feet, the toes are shorter on one side, meaning that he can stand uh, splay legs slightly, he is a lot easier to pose. He's solid in his poses as well. You don't feel like he's going to fall over just by looking at him funny. Um, I do love these spikes that pop up from the uh, from the feet in the transformation. Unfortunately, they are in lilac, uh, so it doesn't look as hard as maybe Shockwave would like to. Um, the gun arm is beautifully done. Um, the, it's the articulation that lets this guy down the most, though, but we'll come to that once we've had another look around the toy. Um, I'll go around to the side, move him a little bit more central, there we go, and around to the back. And other than having sort of hollow leg syndrome, he is utterly, utterly, utterly kibble-free. Um, there is very minor, minor bits. This area here is obviously his generator backpack for the gun, um, the cable fitting beautifully into there and running through. So you can say, you know, you can actually say he's pretty much 100% kibble free. But being a Cybertronian mode, you would expect that because every part should be engineered to fit into both modes quite comfortably and because you don't have to stick to a limited Earth aesthetic, it should be quite easy to keep him nice and tidy. The downside of that is, and I think it is due to keeping him nice and tidy and the Cybertronian mode, is Shockwave comes across as very thin, uh, very narrow all the way up. There isn't, other than this backpack area, which does actually seem feel separate rather than incorporated into the back, he is very, very narrow. It's only a minor quibble because the front is obviously very broad and looks great with it, but it just it's the little things that add up to to make me not so keen on this figure. Articulation then. Head obviously is nice for ball joint and that all moves around lovely. Um, shoulders are up and down and there is a ball joint and twist at the top of the shoulder. Unfortunately that is the only swivel point on the entire arm, there's nothing at the wrist or the elbow, meaning his articulation is severely limited in those parts. You know, he has great ratchet joints oh, yes, at the legs um, and good at the knee as well, but again the swivel is um, reduced to the top of the thigh, completely neutralising the any of the lower arm or leg articulation. And that really comes into play when you start messing around with his gun arm, because there is no way to sort of get him up. And the hose here hampers any movement in the gun, ar gun arm as well, really. And obviously you've got all this movement, but it's not, so it's not overly poseable. Um, it's, it's a simple thing, it's a little thing, but it, again, it's, it's those little gripes that add up to make him not a perfect toy. It is solvable. All we do is unplug from his backpack, plug into his shoulder or any other mech tech port, and you do get a much wider range of articulation. But that cable is always pulling on him. So you can either have it drop off, which is, of course, an option, but he is always hampered by it. It's a lovely, lovely, lovely addition, but it kind of almost feels unnecessary in both these modes. It's really weird. As I say, I loved seeing it when I first saw it. I thought, oh, that's a really great thing. But because it's, I don't know, it almost feels secondary. It's, it hampers more than it gains, which is a real shame because it is, as I say, it's a lovely, lovely idea. I mean, overall, Shockwave is a nice toy. He is a good, solid toy. Is he a faithful representation? We'll know in a couple of months' time when we see the pre proper previews and see his design fully on screen. Overall, it's a good, solid toy. Not to my personal liking, um, and I imagine to some others as well. You know, hindered by 
the uh, the articulation and the colour scheme is purple, maybe not purple enough. And I, I'm left wondering and feeling: will the inevitable leader class figure that you know is probably due out fairly soon after um, this guy in his Voyager form? Will that make this completely redundant? Anyway, I've been King Grimlock. This has been a Dark of the Moon Voyager Shockwave, and we will see you next time.